So this may be the final part of this tutorial series and I'm going to put an end to the series by fixing some bugs in the game. So the first bug that we are going to fix in our game is a bug that causes our procedural tile generator to generate two tiles instead of one each time our player passes through a tile. And the issue with this bug is that if too many tiles are generated too quickly then the tiles can sometimes intersect on an existing tile that the player is currently moving at which can then end up blocking the player from moving any further and that is a big problem. And I'm going to show you that issue over here. So if I were to run this. Now notice over here how many tiles are getting generated. For each tile that the player is moving through, it's actually generating multiple tiles over here. And this can again become an issue over time because the tiles can sometimes again intersect on one of these existing tiles over here. So the solution for this is to first open up the third person character over here. Then navigate to the fog plane over here. Alright, so that is this plane over here that we added to our third person character. Drag down to collision over here and then uncheck generate overlap events. And then under collision presets, we are going to choose no collision over here. So compile this, save it, and then try running this again. And now if I were to try looking at it, you can see it's no longer generating multiple tiles over here. We try this again. So it's generating one tile for each tile that the player over here is passing through. And that is what we want to see actually. Now another bug that I want to fix is related to the screen shaking bug that happens when you die at the laser obstacle. Let me try running this to show you. And now you can see over here there was a bit of a screen shaking over there. So let me try running this again to show you that better. And now you can see over here again that screen shaking that is the laser obstacle actually hitting our player character's capsule component over here. Alright, so to fix this issue, go to the event graph over here and then in the player death event over here, I guess after the set visibility over here, drag this whole section away and then I'm going to drag the capsule component over here and then search for set collision enable. So connect the execution pin and then over here, you need to make sure that the new collision type over here is set to no collision over here. So compile this and try running this again. You can see no issue at all. The laser collider is no longer hitting our player over here and it's no longer creating that whole screen shaking issue over there. So we fixed that bug as well. The third bug that I want to fix is related to the laser obstacle again and the bug this time is that sometimes the ground tile with the laser obstacle will get spawned as soon as you run the game and the player won't have enough time to react to it. So to show you that I'll try running this. As you saw right now the laser obstacle can sometimes get spawned way too early and it can kill the player that way. So to fix this issue Go to the third person game mode over here and in here go to the add ground tile function over here. Drag this input pin over here and then drag the execution pin and then search for sequence. After that from the second pin drag out search for a reroute pin and then once again drag out from the reroute pin and then search for branch. After that, we are going to create a new variable and then I'm going to call this variable current tile index, change the variable type to integer and then I'm going to create another variable and this one I'm going to call set ground tile obstacles, change the variable type 
to boolean and again over here you can choose to give any name that you see fit and after that i'm going to drag the current tile index over here get its value and then drag out from the current tile index and then search for less connect the return value to the condition over here and after that over here give a value of 5 drag the true execution bin search for set current tile index and then once again we are going to get the current tile index and then drag it out and then search for add the add operator and then over here i'm going to give a value of 1 over here and then connect the return value to the set current tile index over here and after that from the branch pin drag out and we are going to set the value of set ground tile obstacles so this one over here and then make sure to set this value as true so compile this and then open up the content rule go to bp ground tile and over here once again drag out the event begin play over here right click over here and i'm going to search for get game mode drag the return value of get game mode and then search for cast to third person game mode and after that i'm going to drag the as bp third person game mode over here and then search for set crown tiles obstacles over here and then from this execution pin of the cast node i'm going to drag out and then search for branch connect the boolean value over here and then connect the true value to the switch on end over here so compile this so yeah we are now done and what is basically happening over here is that over here in our add ground tile function we are first creating a counter over here so each time we execute this function or create a ground tile it's going to add a value to this current tile index over here and if the value of the current tile index exceeds the value of 5 and that means we have created over 5 tiles in our level then the set ground tiles obstacles over here will be set to true and that variable is over here and this boolean value over here will control whether this ground tile over here will get to use its obstacles over here so that's the obstacle wall door or the obstacle is over here all right and this way we can prevent our player from accidentally hitting one of these two obstacles over here early on in the game so if i were to try running this you can see the initial few tiles over here have no obstacles and after a while we start to see some obstacles over here once again trying this out you can see again no obstacles now ground oil initially so you can see that everything is now working fine and we have fixed another bug in our game so for the fourth bug in our game we need to actually fix a bug with our ramp up and ramp down tiles so the collider in the ramp up and the ramp down tiles are actually a bit too small and the player can sometimes jump over a ramp down tile and over time this can be an issue because there won't be enough tiles for the player to actually run over and to fix this bug we need to open the content row and open the ramp down tile just close the ground tile and the third person game mode over here and once again go back to the content row and open the ramp up tile so for the ramp down tile simply increase the size of the box collision over here so i have increased the collider just like this compile this and then over here as well we are going to increase the size of our box collision over here so just like this once again compile this as well and save it so with this the fourth bug has also been fixed and yeah that's about it for this video so like i said at the start this is most likely going to be the final part of this tutorial series and i know there are still a bunch of features left to add that could make this game closer to what temple run would be but the reason why i decided to end this tutorial series is that first of all 
I made a bunch of mistakes while making it. I didn't actually complete making the game with all the features that I was adding to it. So this made the tutorial series more of a devlog but also kind of a tutorial at the same time. Which then resulted in this tutorials being too complicated and unnecessary modifications had been done that could have been prevented if I actually completed making the game and then made the tutorial on it. And in case you haven't noticed, this tutorial series is largely based of a tutorial that the devs at Unreal made several years ago. But the issue with that tutorial was that it was outdated and it didn't even work with Unreal Engine 4.25 which was the version of Unreal Engine that I was using. And what I was supposed to do in this tutorial series was to make an updated version of that tutorial in Unreal Engine 5.0. But I have fallen for that common trap that every beginner devs always falls for. And that is adding too many features into your project because it's cool to do so and end up overcomplicating things. Which will always come back to bite you later on. I feel like I should have put an end to this tutorial series at part 13. So yeah, this tutorial series is a mess and I think continuing it any further is a bad idea. I hope at least some of you who are still watching this tutorial series learn something out of it. So if you want, you can download the project from itch.io for free. Link is included in the comment section. And yeah, that's about it for this tutorial series. Thanks a lot for watching and see you later. Bye.